Let's talk more about the impact of these new tariffs on ordinary Americans. CNN's Tom Foreman joins us live now from Washington. So, so Tom, um, is it expected that U.S. businesses will automatically pass on the cost of these tariffs to American consumers? Yes, it's not sure how much, right? And not, not clear how many of the Chinese companies that were affected by this were automatically passing cost on. But at some point, there is enough pressure, things have to break, and at that point, yes, all signs are American consumers will feel it. Despite friendly handshakes between Team Trump and the Chinese delegates, trade talks have stalled. No deal on the horizon. Hello, everybody. And no sign of President Trump giving an inch on the 25% tariff he's launched on Chinese goods. I happen to think that tariffs for our country are very powerful. You know, we're the piggy bank that everybody steals from, including China. But American consumers could soon feel a greater impact if the tariffs expand to consumer products as threatened. China would be expected to pass on those expenses, jacking up prices on smartphones, computers, televisions, fitness trackers, and much more. The extra cost for the average American family of four is expected to be close to $800. What could drive it? Three quarters of the toys bought in the U.S. are made in China, including these hugely popular dolls. 93% of Chinese-made footwear, including some shoes for Nike, could be hit. So could clothing, Bluetooth headsets, and even drones. Trump's tariffs on China last year steered away from consumer goods and focused on industrial items such as solar panels, steel, and aluminum. Those costs were passed on by American companies. American consumers are already paying. They, they just don't really know. It's kind of a stealth tax, huh. but uh, it's going to become a very obvious tax uh, not, too, uh, yeah. not too far yeah. from now if this, if this continues. The major markets are already showing unease over the clash. In the next three years, if China and the U.S. continue warring over trade, economists say both countries could see their economies slow down and close to a million American jobs might be lost. Still, the president has long insisted China is cheating the U.S. by stealing intellectual property, manipulating currency, and most recently reneging on a framework for a deal. And he's convinced China will blink first, tweeting, tariffs will make our country much stronger, not weaker. Just sit back and watch. In the end, what it really comes down to is this, that very uncertainty that makes the markets uneasy and makes other countries uneasy and can upset the world economy is the thing that Donald Trump loves. He sees it as a negotiating tactic to keep everyone off balance. We just don't know if that constructive talk behind the scene they're talking about now is constructive enough to offset the downside of all that. Zane? All right, I mean, in your piece, you talked about how American consumers are certainly going to feel the pinch and how uh, a lot of jobs could be lost as a result of this. But when Donald Trump tweets that tariffs will, be, will bring in far more wealth to our country, meaning the United States, than even a phenomenal deal of the traditional kind, what does he mean by that? Well, what he means is something that almost every economist here says is not true. They, he, what he's trying to say is that the U.S. would simply get a better deal all around the world by putting pressure on people so that American goods can sell into their markets in a more free way, be subject to fewer barriers that are in place by other governments out there. But an awful lot of economists even here say they do not believe that, and they certainly don't believe that tariffs are producing this windfall of money into the United States that the White House constantly claims. All right, uh, Tom Foreman, live for us there. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay, so to give us uh, more perspective on all of this now, I want to bring in Dimitri Sevastopoulou, Washington Bureau Chief of the Financial Times. Dimitri, thank you so much for being with us. So, um, in your opinion, is the U.S. demanding way too much and conceding way too little? What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, whether the U.S. is demanding way too much or not really depends on what the Chinese think. I mean, I think... What we've learned this week was that we went into this week uh, thinking things were going to be a disaster. Uh, over the last weekend, negotiations had not gone well. There was a possibility that the Chinese wouldn't come to the U.S., but the negotiator came, uh, had a series of meetings, and is on his way back to China tonight. So, But the Chinese clearly have sent a message to the U.S. that what you're asking for right now is not something that we are going to agree to. So the real question is going to be, over the next days and weeks, will the Chinese capitulate and do what the Americans want to do, 
or will the American side say the Chinese are not going to budge as much as we want them to and therefore we have to relax some of our demands? Right now in Washington, the sense is that Donald Trump is feeling empowered, that he's not going to back off. But the Chinese only came here for, you know, a day and a half. That was not, despite the official saying it was constructive talks, if they were having really meaningful talks and making huge progress, you would imagine they might have gone a little bit longer. So I think we're, we're in a kind of a game of chicken right now. So, so based on what Steve Mnuchin said, that the talks had been constructive, I mean, based on that language, should people who oppose tariffs be hopeful? Uh, I don't know. I think it's, you know, when trade negotiators come out after meetings or diplomats meet their counterparts, you know, the stock phrase is to say things were constructive. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. I think it's fair to say it's better than what we had earlier in the week when it looked like the Chinese may not even come to Washington. So in that sense, it's probably a positive development. But really, until we see whether the two sides are going to move, um, we don't know whether there's a sense that this trade war is going to be solved soon or as you said earlier in the broadcast that you know the prices of american goods are going to start rising in supermarkets and at walmart and that this is actually going to get a lot more worse before it gets solved so just in terms of uh, from the chinese perspective if xi jinping is seen to capitulate or cave to the us demands how will that change or affect how he's perceived back home well, I mean, he has, you know, over the last few years, he has really consolidated power. He's essentially made himself president for life by changing the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so on, on one hand, he's an incredibly powerful leader. But on the other hand, over the last few years in China, he has purged uh, tens of hundreds of thousands of Communist Party officials for... Uh, alleged crimes of corruption and other things. So while he is very powerful, he also has a lot of enemies. He has hardliners in his regime the same way that Donald Trump has hardliners in his uh, government here. I mean, at one point when Donald Trump and Xi Jinping were having a dinner to discuss some of these issues, Trump said, you know, I have people at my table here who have different views on trade. And Xi Jinping looked across the table and smiled and said, so do I. So he's under pressure from his hardliners not to cave. Um, and I think the way Donald Trump uh, upped the ante this week by tweeting, um, you know, last weekend, it makes it difficult for the Chinese, I think, to kind of come to Washington and say, OK, we're going to do everything you say you want us to do. So I think it's going to take a little bit of time uh, for things to simmer down. We're going to have to see how the Chinese react to whatever the discussions were in Washington over the last two days uh, to see what Xi Jinping actually decides to do next. I mean, just explain Donald Trump's negotiation uh, tactics and style, because this time last week, two weeks ago even, a lot of people were talking about the fact that there likely was light at the end of the tunnel when it came to uh, the trade war between the US, U.S. and China. People thought that there was a deal on the horizon, possibly. What's happened between now and then? Well, so far, we've really only heard from the American side. So we've got one side of the story, but that story is that when Steve Mnuchin, Treasury Secretary, and Robert Lighthizer, the trade representative, were in China last week for negotiations, during that week, they started to get a sense that some of the things that they believe the Chinese had signed up to in terms of how you enforce whatever the trade deal ends up being, that China was backsliding a little bit. Um, they came back to Washington. They had conversations with Donald Trump at the weekend. Um, we don't know what the Chinese said in, in the interim. But it was pretty clear that the American side came to the view that China was backsliding and therefore they needed to put more pressure on China to show China that the US was serious, that China needed to, um, to do what it had promised it would do, and that if it tried to renege, that it was no way the Americans were going to do a deal. Now, in, in the States, a lot of hardliners on China and frankly, a lot of businesses who want Trump to get tougher on China say, whatever you do this time, it's got to be enforceable. You've got to make sure China is going to follow through and do whatever they agree in the deal. Therefore, it needs to be uh, very solid and you need to have mechanisms to enforce it. The backsliding, we're told by American officials, is in relation to how you enforce the deal. And I think until they get resolution on that, we're not really going to, it's going to be very hard to see how the two sides come together. So just in terms of the impact on the US economy, though, um, you know, a lot of people are saying that U.S. businesses will, of course, at some point pass on the costs of higher tariffs to consumers. Um, how much do you see consumer spending really being affected as a result? Well, I think that really depends on, first of all, to what extent prices rise and what kinds of prices are rising. I mean, as we get later in the year, if, if we got close to Christmas, for example, and this trade war was still where it is now, well, then you're going to have all sorts of products that people want to buy for presents at the holiday season. The prices of those will have gone up and people will start feeling the pain.
Um, the other issue is if the prices go up in the short term and American consumers decide that they can't afford to buy certain products, well, that's obviously going to take a toll on the domestic economy here as well. So there's kind of a balancing going on. And the other thing that could happen is, you know, a, a good news, I think, for the American consumer this week was that China didn't retaliate with its own tariffs when Donald Trump raised his rates from 10 percent to 25 percent. It's possible that the Chinese could come back in a couple of weeks and say, you know, hold on a second, you did this, well, tit for tat, we're going to do that. Now, we're not there yet, but if that happens, that's also going to have a knock-on effect for both the Chinese and the American economy. So I think, you know, the risks are still out there. And, you know, based on the end of this week, I don't think we're any closer to getting a resolution, but we didn't have disaster, I think, is the good news.